So thread on shank as normal. I always like to thread right along the shank for the simple reason it gives it base. If you watch some of the uh, fly tying videos, they, they start two thirds of the way along. And but I always think your material is more inclined to slip if you haven't got that thread base. Some floss silk, deep red. Now because one little strand of that I never find enough to give it a decent tail, I double it over twice. I nearly always tie these too long and I clip them later. So you don't have to get it exactly right to start. Okay, so you can see how I've doubled that over and I'll just cut it off to what however long you like your tail. But I don't like it too long because particularly if it's wool because wool once it gets wet is very heavy so you're going to get a fly that's going to go bum down first up so just just a nice little toe um, peacock pearl of course you need now I, I do vary the color in this so this is quite ginger um, but into deep red so I want one largish feather for, for the palmer hackle Tie that in first. It doesn't have to be, because this has got a palmer hackle on it, it doesn't have to be a perfect peacock feather like if you were tying a size 12 or 14 normal red tag, you need really good peacock. But you just really need the colour to show through on this because you've got a palmer hackle on it. The peacock hurl itself on a poor one is not as thick as what it is on a good one. Now, a lot of the commercially tied flies you'll find there's half a dozen of these twisted together. Don't ever do that because it's adding weight to that little size 14 or 12 and it just doesn't float. You, if you've got a really good peacock curl, you can do it with one peacock curl. Now, I've got two poorer ones here because these are not so good. As I said, I only want the colour to show through, so... Oh, no, Bring your thread two thirds of the way along the shank and just tie them in. Don't have to be perfectly because all you want is the colour. Bring that to your thread and tie it off. Now bring this feather forward through the peacock curl. So this is your palmer. Now, I don't know whether anybody has noticed, but I'm using these Indian capes. The Indian ones are, for this particular fly, I find better because they're bigger. So cut away that tip of the feather. Okay, and then I'm going to shape that. I, I guess it's gone through somebody's mind, why did I bring that feather in from the tail? Because I'm going to shape it so it doesn't really matter. Um, and if I bought it from this end, I've not got a rib on this fly, so I've got nothing to hold it there. Okay. So just shape it in a body shape like a gum beetle or, yeah. Just a little bit at a time, just remembering if you make one wrong cut. But if you do it just a little at a time, then you can nearly always get it fairly right. Just have a look at the shape of it. Tapering it towards the tail, yeah. But not too short. I mean, this is going to help this float. Okay, if you've got one of these capes, the American Hoffman's or whatever you may have, in a, bigger one, a big enough one, so you want two feathers for the front hackle. Okay, so when you're putting two hackles on the front, like this, just sit them together. And when you're tying dry fly hackles in, so you've got your curve that way, yep. and that's for dry flies. Okay, when I'm tying <coughs> feathers on with reasonably thick centre stalks, if you like, I run my thumbnail and I press really hard. That flattens them out. All of you would have noticed if you try and tie a thicker um, stem in, 
sometimes if you haven't got it tied in tight enough, it'll twist around. Just tie them in nice and tight. Cut away those excess stems. Um, you can use a pair of pliers or you can use your, I've got used to just using my hands so it's up to you. Just hold the tip and wind and that thread forward a bit. Bring that feather forward to the eye. Okay, and tie it down, just a couple of turns, and cut that feather tip away. And the other fe feather through. Bring the thread through. Now if you haven't got that tied down properly, as everybody would know, it springs off and away it goes and bits of material poking at you. Okay. Now never be frightened of a hackle. A lot of people think, oh I'm going to crush that with my fingers and just get hold of it and pull it back and just form a nice little head. This is not a pretty red tag by any means, but it will float <coughs> just all day with that palmed hackle on the body. Look finisher. Do you ever trim the underneath of the hackle? The um, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes I trim the underneath of the hackle. But I just tie them and leave them in the box like that because you never know what the day is going to be when you get out there. So, so there it is. My great lake red tag.